How's it going guys? I'm back with another globalization tutorial. What we've got here is the all new Vivo X300 Pro Chinese version because there's no global version as of now. And then we're going to be trying to make it suitable and ready for global use. First of all, reasons for considering a Chinese version, even if there is a global one, might be a cheaper price tag and better overall functionality. Because at the end of the day, these are Chinese phones that we're talking about. So this is what you get after setting up your phone and transferring all of your data and apps from your old phone. Essentially, all you gotta do is head over to settings, scroll down to users and accounts, and then go to Google Basic Service Management. All you gotta do is first of all, enable this. Once you do, you'll get this extra option right here under system management that says Google. And from here, you'll be able to manage your Google account, of course, like, like on any other Android phone. Now, by doing that, you will have enabled basic Google functionality. And to get the Play Store, all you gotta do is open the Vivo App Store and look up Google Play and then install this one right here that says Google Play Shangdian. You can, um, I've already done it so it says open for me. You can install it. Basically it's already installed, but you have to enable it and update it essentially to um, get the icon for it on the home screen. And that's literally it. And after doing that, you'll get an updated version of the Google Play Store with the U tab. So that shows that it's a new version indeed with support for auto update. And then you can of course look up all of your favorite apps and install them like you would. In terms of multilingual functionality, you do get a uh, more extended list of languages as compared to the Xiaomi. So there is, um, I would say, almost all European or widespread European languages. There's Dutch, Spanish, French, Italian, and all those. Yeah, so uh, you do get all those languages. And um, in case you don't know, I'm assuming most of you do, but in case you don't, you can of course get Gboard or any other keyboard app. Obviously, you'll get all the languages supported by the Google keyboard. Um, to be able to type in those languages. Next up, we have Android Auto. Yes, this is going to be a breakthrough. So you're going to look it up on the Play Store. I love typing on this phone. There's great haptics to it. Um, you're going to do that, and then you're going to enable it. It will be disabled by default, same as the Play Store, but it, it'll already be built in. So you can enable it, and then you'll get it right here under Settings, where it says More Connections. There's Android Auto. I can't open it right now because I'm in China. It does say outside the China mainland. So you won't be able to open it in China, but still you have functionality uh, for Android Auto. And then uh, you, you do get Jovi in car as well if you do live in China. But that's all you have to do for Android Auto. Next up is Gemini and Circle to Search if you want it. So I've dedicated the uh, shortcut button to it. If I hold it, I'll get Circle to Search right here. And then if you want that, obviously there's a few apps you gotta install first. First and foremost is the Google app. You got to install this before anything else. And then you got to do a uh, Google Assistant. And then Gemini, of course, you got to have all of these installed to be able to use it. Uh, they're, they're kind of intertwined. And then uh, there's the uh, famous app that I did point out earlier in my uh, Xiaomi tutorial. It's called Mi CTS. It's this one right here. And it's not going to be on the Play Store. You're going to have to download it manually but uh, it's pretty straightforward in terms of installing it. There's no settings or anything. All you gotta do is to have it installed and then you have to enable some uh, background functionality for it. So head over to app info, enable background power control for it, put it on high background power usage, and then go to permissions, view all permissions and enable all of these for it so that it does run in the background all the time. And make sure to have done this for the Google app and the uh, Google Assistant and Gemini and all that. You gotta um, have all those uh, auto start and associated startup and um, background usage and all that. You gotta have all of those enabled for all of these apps. And why is my home screen a mess? And let me show you a cool trick. You, you can shake your phone to organize your home screen. That's a cool one, I like that. And after you do that, you open the Google app, you go under settings, Google Assistant, scroll down where it says digital assistance from Google. You can pick Gemini or Google Assistant, but what's the main point here is that um, it's is this part right here where it says Android Default Digital Assist app. I've already done it, that's why it goes straight to Google, but uh, you're gonna have to be re redirected to this page. It's gonna be set to none by default, but you're gonna have to choose Google for it. Otherwise, none of this will work. And once you do that, uh, you'll be ready to use the uh, Me CTS app and to dedicate the shortcut button to it. I already showed this in my first video, but I'm going to do it again just in case you missed it. So you go under shortcuts and accessibility, shortcut button, and you get two options to do that. It's going to have to be either press and hold or double press. I've done press and hold for it. So you got to scroll um, all the way to where it says app access and then obviously put it on Me CTS. That's all you got to do for it. 
or you can uh, you can of course dedicate it to Gemini or Google Assistant if you're more comfortable that way, or you can do the you can do double press for that, whichever makes you more comfortable. Or if you want to use your shortcut button for other things, there's still, of course, the uh, the other options that I introduced in my video for the Xiaomi. So there's Edge Gestures right here. This is a paid app. Um, I'm going to go through it very quickly again um, in case you haven't watched my first video. So you're going to have to enable accessibility settings for it. You're going to have to allow everything. And then once you enable it, you'll get it right here. It's, it's a bar. Um, it's, it's barely visible for me because of my settings. I've done it that way. But um, you can do this. It's set to Google Lens right now. You can you can set set it to anything. You can um, you can do swipe down or up on it for Gemini or Circle to Search or whatever other app or service. So this is a good one, but it's a paid app. I'm going to disable it because I'm not using it at the moment. And of course, there's Button Mapper, which I did show earlier as well. So you can use this to um, dedicate your volume rockers to it. There's still no Hey Google, Google Timeline, or Quick Share, unfortunately. You are definitely going to be missing out on those three as of now. But you do get to choose your default apps for many different things. I'm going to show it to you in a second. It's going to be under Apps and Default Apps. So these are the categories. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send my browser to Chrome, Change, and then you can, of course, use Gmail for emailing or yeah, all these other things, even different file formats. There is more to it right here. Now, by default, when you swipe down on a home screen, you're not going to get your control center or notification area. There's this other uh, place, not sure what it's called. I'm going to go to home settings. It's called global search. Yeah, that's what I forgot. Um, it's going to be on global search. If you don't want that, and I'm assuming you don't, you can uh, set it to open notification center and control center instead. And then there's this other area when you swipe right on the home screen. I've already gotten rid of the Chinese news and stuff. You can go to settings right here. There's featured content or easier life and top news and all that. I've already disabled all of those. That's what you got to do. Or you can just disable this area entirely because you cannot replace it with the Google feed. And then in terms of bloatware, you can obviously go ahead and uninstall as many of these Chinese apps as you want. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now because I don't use this bunch. And then, yeah, I'm going to shake it again to organize them. Okay, that's a cool one. You can, um, you can get rid of this and... And then to get the Google alternative, you're going to have to tap kit right here and then scroll all the way down where it says app widgets and then find Google. It's right here. And then get the uh, search bar right here if you want it. And this is how it's going to look. Now, another critical thing to do is to fix your notification delay, because if you don't do these, there's going to be a delay. And to do that, and by the way, there's support for more um, notification badges now. There's Instagram and WhatsApp as well. Still no Telegram, but these two. And so you got to tap and hold app info battery life, background power control, and put it on high background power usage. And then, of course, you got to give it all those other permissions as well. Auto start, associated startup. These are the two most important ones, but you do need others um, as well. Floating window, maybe background pop-ups. This is an important one as well. Display on lock screen. Some of you guys like this. I know it. And then um, you can disable this one right here as well, because that's going to be enabled by default as well, If just in case you don't use your app for a little while. And then that's basically it. You'll get your notifications on time. And if not, there's one more step you got to do, or you can just do this anyways, just to be on the safe side. You can have to go to settings, battery, power saving management, scroll down. It says sleep standby optimization. You can disable this. Uh, there's a description for it as well, but uh, I recommend disabling it because it might interfere with your notification process. But after having done this, I've had zero notification issues with my messengers like WhatsApp or Telegram. And then there's the sidebar, which supports all of your apps. So you can open pop-ups for any app right here. And then there's Vivo's super dragging feature um, that now supports more apps. I've already showed this in my um, initial video. There's Gmail, there's uh, WhatsApp and Facebook and Twitter. And then, uh, yeah. Still no Telegram, but there's um, there's these other apps that you can use. That's a good thing. Thank you, Vivo. There's support for YouTube background play, and it works beautifully right here. And you can go back to it. And then that's it. I can't think of anything else that you need to do. So you got Google services. You got the Play Store. You got Gemini, Circle to Search, Android Auto even. So there's still no uh, quick share, but there's Google Wallet. It does work. It still does depend a little on, on your bank, whether or not they'll allow you to add your card in. But the app is working flawlessly in terms of security and all that. And so that's it. Stay tuned for my gaming and performance review in a day or two. And then a camera comparison, of course. This is a Vivo we're talking about. And also do make sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.